Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video, we will create a chain link. Then with the help of the Mass FX modifier, we will learn how to create this great looking chain and throw it over a tire, a wheel, or any other object you like. So let's get started. First of all, let's pop up to the main toolbar, Customize, and then we'll scroll down to Unit Setup, select Metric, Centimeters, then press OK. We can start by creating a chain link first. So let's go to Shapes, and I'll select a rectangle. I'll just draw out a small rectangle here in the front viewport. I'll press Alt W on the keyboard to maximize the viewport and Z to zoom in. Let's go to the Modify panel now. Let's just scroll up here to Rendering and turn on Enable in Rendering and Enable in Viewport. Make sure I've got Radial turned on. And in Thickness, I'm going to type in 6.5. In Sides, I'll bring them down to 8. Now let's scroll down a wee bit further. We'll go down to the parameters. and length, I'm going to type in 15. Width, I'll type in 25. And here we have an option for corner radius. Let's just drag this up a wee bit and see what it does. This is going to give us some nice rounder corners. Don't bring it up too far or they'll overlap. I'll just type in 6. Let's scroll up now to Interpolations, and here in Steps, I'm going to bring it down to 4. Press Alt W to go to all four viewports, then we'll pop into our Perspective viewport. Let's maximize it. I'll just press Z and zoom in, and orbit around. That's looking quite good. Let's right click and convert it to an editable poly. Let's go over and select our edge mode. We'll drag our cursor right through the middle of all these edges. Then we can pop over to the panel, scroll down and click on the small settings icon for connect. Now let's have a wee look here in the caddy. We'll select two segments then press OK. Now we can come back over to the panel and select our polygon mode. Select all these center polygons. We're going to give them a bevel. So let's come over now and select the small settings icon for bevel. Okay, we can see our default settings. First of all, we'll change our group. Select local normal. And now here in the bevel height, we'll just bring it down to something like 0 0.5. Now in the bevel outline, we'll bring this down to a negative 1. Then press OK. That's giving us a nice little bevel here. I'm just going to come back to the panel now and select my edge mode. Notice now I have these two edges selected. We'll give them a small chamfer, so I'll come over and click on the small settings icon for chamfer. We'll just bring this down. Bring this right down to 0 and then we'll boost it up to 0 0.1. Then press OK. That will give us a nice little chamfer there. This is going to be the little welded piece that's in the middle of a link. Let's come over now and turn off our editable poly. I'll scroll right down to Subdivision Surface and turn on Use NURMS Subdivision. This has smoothened out all our edges and curves nicely. I'll just orbit around so we can have a little look. The welded piece in the centre is looking good. Well, here's our first link. Let's carry on now and create a few more. First of all, we'll go up and change the name. I'm just going to type in here, Link. We'll leave the NURMS turned on, and I'll right-click and convert it again to an editable poly. Before we go any further, I'm going to change the colour. I think it would be a little easier for the video. You don't have to do this, though. There, I think that's a lot better. Before we create any copies of our links, we're going to add the modifier. So we'll go to the modifier list. Scroll down and select the Mass FX Rigid Body Modifier. Now you can see a mess has been applied to the object straight away. Let's pop over to the panel and have a little look. Let's look here in the Rigid Body Type. It's set to Dynamic. The Dynamic Type will be affected by gravity, collide with other rigid bodies and will be affected in the simulation. Now let's pop down to Physical Material and have a look at the presets. 
We're going to select one of these preset materials. The link's going to be metal, so let's select steel. Here in the modify shapes, you can see the named link, that's our object. Now let's have a wee look here at this mesh type that's been applied automatically. The shape type set to convex. We don't want that because it's covering up the hole. So let's have a little look. We're going to set it to concave. Notice nothing's happened. In fact, the mesh has disappeared. So let's scroll down a bit furthermore to physical mesh parameters. And here we'll find the generate button. Let's click on it. Now it's calculating and it's creating its own mesh. We now can see we have a white mesh all around it. The default settings are fine for this video. Now when we clone our object, they'll already have the modifier applied. I'll right click now and get my move tool. Hold the shift key down and I'll drag out a copy to the side. Now here in the clone options, select instance and then press OK. Make sure you have the link in the same position as I do in the video. Let's select our rotate tool now and also turn on our angle snaps. I'll rotate it a negative 90. Just make sure that we have the little beveled bit in the front. OK, now we can select both links together and we can create another copy. Hold the shift key down and we'll just drag out these two links to the side. Position them the same as you see in the video. Now here in the clone options, make sure it's set to instance and we can type in a number of copies, say 10, then press OK. I'll just zoom out so we can see them all. Let's press Alt W now and go to all four viewports. Pop into the top viewport. I'm going to select all the links and just drag them to the centre. Next I'll drop down to the left viewport and I'll drag it up. We're going to create a plane in a torus now and we're going to place it underneath. So we'll just lift this up higher, a little bit more. Let's go over to the panel now, over to geometry and we'll select the plane. We'll just drag out a plane here in the top viewport. Don't worry about the size. I'll drop down to the transform panel at the bottom of the screen and bring my x and y axis back to zero. This will just center the object. Then I'll come over to the modify panel and I'm just going to bring the length and width segments back to one. That's all right, we'll just leave that as it is. Let's draw out a torus now. So I'll come back to geometry, I'll select the torus and here in the center I'll drag out a torus. Let's create a radius 1 of about 85 and a radius 2, something like 25, something like that. And then we'll drag it up. I'll also pop down to the bottom of the panel to the transform and bring the y and x axis back to zero, just to center it. Well, that's our scene set up. Let's just pop into our perspective viewport and orbit around a wee bit. Now we can add the modifiers to these two last objects. Let's start with the torus first, select it. And we'll pop up to the main toolbar. Click anywhere in the middle of the icons, right click, and now from the menu, select the Mass FX toolbar. You can just leave the toolbar floating or anchor it. I'm just going to anchor it here. We're going to create a small simulation so the chain flops naturally over the torus. The torus and the plane will not move, but will interact with the chain. So we'll pop up to the main toolbar and we're going to set the torus and the plane as a static rigid body type. Let's pop over to the panel now. We'll scroll up right to the top and here in the rigid body type make sure it's set to static. That's fine. Now let's scroll down here to the physical material. We're going to select a preset. I'm just going to select rubber. We'll carry on moving down. We'll go to shape type. Notice it's set to convex. If we left it set at convex, then the chain would not be able to go through the center of the torus. So let's change it to concave. Then we'll scroll down to physical mesh parameters and click on generate. 
This will create a new mesh that will go all around the object. And there we are, that's generated. Notice how it fits right around the object, leaving the center part empty. Before we can start the simulation, we need to apply the modifier now to the plane. So select the plane first, then we'll go up to the toolbar, and we're going to do the same. Set selected as static rigid body. Let's just pop over to the panel and have a look. Rigid body type set to static, that's fine. I'm just going to leave all the default settings. Let's just scroll down here to the shape type. It's set automatically to box. That's fine. We're just going to leave it there. Now we have everything set up. Let's maximize our perspective viewport. Press R W to do that. Now we're going to use the simulation controls. Here in the center, we'll press the play button. It'll take a couple of seconds. Wow, the whole lot's come apart. Let's go back and turn this off. Every chain link has come apart. Let's go back up to the toolbar. And now we're going to click on the tools. Now here, let's have a look on the panel. Make sure we have the use ground collisions turned on, the gravity set to the Z. Okay, then let's have a look here in the rigid body. We'll adjust their subsets and solar itinerations. I think I'll type in two for substeps. In the solar itinerations, I'm going to type in 20. Then let's go back up again to the toolbar and press reset just to bring everything back again. Now let's press the play button. It's still breaking apart, but we're getting there. Let's come back over and adjust our sub steps again. This time I think I'll bring them up to 10. And in the solver itinerations, I'll try 30. Let's go back and press reset and then the play button again. Ah, now that's worked. Notice how each link is individually moving and twisting. That's coming along fine. Let's have a look. Each link is different. Some are twisted to the left, upside down. That looks, that looks really good, really natural. If you look down on the timeline, you can see I stopped the simulation on frame 42. Let's go back, press reset, and let's play it again right to the end. We'll let it go the full 100 frames. Notice now the chain will actually sink right to the bottom. Right in the center and it will go right to the bottom. We can see how the last links are turning. And here's the end result of our simulation. Let's go one step further. Let's bake the simulation. Let's click on this link. This will open up the panel again. We can scroll up right to the top and here we can find our bake button on the dynamic object. Also we could go up to the simulation panel. Here we can find all the controls for playback and the simulation baking. We also have an unbake all button. This will remove all the animated keyframes if we need to. OK, let's go back and press reset and then we'll drop down to the panel and we'll press Bake All. This will now convert the simulation into animated keyframes on the timeline. When the slider gets to 100 it'll stop automatically. And there it is. I'll just grab the slider and drag this up and down. There we are, we have a small animation. You 
You can also use the reset and the play button here. Remember, you can always go back and undo this animation. Just pop back up to the panel, click on the Unbake button, and this will remove all the keyframes. I'll close the panel and orbit around. That looks really natural. Each chain link is in a different position. It's sunken in the middle. That looks very good. If you're only interested in the final image, then you can render it out as one frame. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.